Welcome back to the Journey to Jerusalem on this uh, Sunday of the first week of Lent. And during the initial stages of this journey to Jerusalem, the disciples of John the Baptist will approach Jesus and ask him, Why do the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? It comes from Matthew chapter 9, verse 14. That question has a lot less to do with dietary curiosity and a lot more to do with their longing to know if Jesus is the Messiah. Look at John chapter 3 or Matthew chapter 3. We see that John the Baptist himself was adamant that he was not the Messiah, and John's disciples knew it. As faithful Jews awaiting the Messiah, John's disciples are in a sense asking, are you the one that we've been waiting for? This whole question about the Pharisees fasting and his just disciples not fasting, it's, it's, it's all part of this, this, this longing in the disciples of John the Baptist to know, is he the Messiah? So Jesus, as he responds to them, is going to respond in a very beautiful way as he says, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them. Very interesting way to respond to a question that is intentionally about the Messiah. And his response, Jesus' response may seem cryptic, you know, to our, our, our naked ears, but Jesus' response is actually affirming that he is the Messiah. And he's using language that is veiled in, in the scriptures themselves. It's clear that many Jews were awaiting a messianic king, a king who was going to be a leader. We see that in 2 Samuel 7, 12. However, there was a remnant core of Israel that was awaiting a bridegroom Messiah who would eventually wed humanity back with God. In both Isaiah 54 and Isaiah 62, we read of God's desire to be your husband and marry a virgin. The Bible itself is filled with references to marriage. It starts with the marriage of Adam and Eve and ends with the marriage of the Lamb and his bride. You close the Bible, again, as we said the other day, and take out all the footnotes, all the references. You just have the physical text of the sacred scriptures, and the exact middle of the Bible is the Song of Songs, the great Song of Zion, Song of Israel. This love poetry between the bride and the bridegroom. So therefore, when Jesus is asked about, are you the Messiah? His response is this. He says, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? And in so saying this, Jesus is actually proclaiming he is the Messiah, the long-awaited one of, of the Old Testament. So Jesus is journeying to Jerusalem because it's there that he will give himself fully to his bride on the cross giving himself to the church. In 1994, Blessed John Paul II wrote a, his letter to families, and in it he wrote, and I quote here, By describing himself as a bridegroom, Jesus reveals the essence of God and confirms his immense love for mankind. In this way, he indicated the fulfillment of his own person, of the image of God, the bridegroom which had already been used in the Old Testament in order to fully reveal the mystery of God as a mystery of love. End quote. Jesus loves humanity that much. Jesus loves you that much. So you, you may, not, may never have considered his love in such a way However, I want, I want to encourage you to spend the day with Jesus and ask him to reveal his heart to you, which is a heart of love. All of this first week of Lent, we will focus on love. That's who Jesus is, for he loves you. For your prayer today, I encourage you to pray with Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 to 17. And as we have been encouraging you to do so beautifully, 
Close your eyes. Use your spiritual senses. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Jump in the scripture passage. Jump in the scene. Be with Jesus in that conversation. Listen to him teach. Look at him. As he's talking about himself as the bridegroom, ask him to explain that to you. Ask him to just speak whatever he wants to say to you about not only his being the bridegroom, but his love for you. God bless you.